Hello, people of the internet. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 17 and the Premier League Baseball GM Mode Sim. I am F5 Penguin. You can find me all over social media and the interwebs at F5 Penguin. And you are the people that have been watching, hopefully, the past 10 episodes of our GM Mode Sim. If you haven't, welcome. We appreciate you being here. If you have, you know it's August 19th. We're about to sim five more days and... Things have not been looking up at all. No hitting, bad pitching, everything's last except for stolen bases. I don't know what's up or down anymore. All I know is something needs to be done. Now, the good news is, is I'm currently right now, right now, in trade talks with my brother, the GM of Joplin, who won a title, mind you, I have not done that yet, for a big league hitter to trade away. Uh, he's about $450,000 now. I know. We have no money. So... He'd eat one of my contracts, one of my uh, big name players who just haven't been playing. Plus, he'd get a prospect plus another prospect. So it's kind of like a two for one. Um, it's going to be a three for one, but it's a two for one because it's just a contract swap on on the main stay. So that might be happening. I will let you know if it does happen uh, very soon. The trade deadline is nearing, so I have to make that trade relatively soon in order for it to go through. It is now August 24th. We've simmed five days, and we are 24 and 34. <laughs> oh, man. So there is a little bit of improvement there. Hey, improvement. What's up? Uh, we are five games back. We are ahead of Albany, and we are f we're close. You know, Queens and Fargo are tied right now at the same record at 500. This division is pretty weak, and that's better for us because we can get uh, a little bit higher up in the rankings. And looking at these wins here, we won one, two, three. Looks like we won three out of four, five, three out of five. I can't hate that. One, three, lost two. Let's take a look real quick, and we'll secure that in just a moment. Let me delete these real quick, and I'll show you the player that we're looking at getting rid of, or that we're looking at trading. I don't know. Do I want to show that on this episode? Yeah, because by the time we do it, it'll be after the trade's done. So, yeah. We'll, we'll do that as well. Uh, this will be a short episode because that trade deadline, I'm, I'm working out the deadline. I have uh, just a couple of minutes to get that trade in after this episode is published. So that's coming up soon. Let's look at the box score for our first game against Wichita where we scored late in the ninth inning, won six to five. And as, like I said, as long as the games are close, I'm pretty much okay if we're scoring runs. That's what's important. Three runs for Austin. Hey, now. Hey, now. Getting some uh, some action there from Austin. And a run for Philpot, three hits, one for four with Inselman, nothing from Cobra. No at bat though, he was just a sub, uh, defensive sub. Roberts, no runs, three hits, so he went three for four. Kleinmeyer went one for four. Fountain, one strikeout, leaves two on base, goes over for four. He's my questionable. I might have to bring up another prospect, and maybe he was just a bust. We'll have to see how he progresses at the end of the season. I don't know if he will be our permanent solution and catcher for five years. We, we might have just not, we might have, for lack of a better term, struck out with him. It's possible. So looking at our, our pitching here, Starks doesn't get credited with anything, but he does pitch a, uh, not, definitely not his best game, but far from his worst now, for sure, because we've seen him tank it three or four times in a row now, right? So Williamson gets a win, which is surprising to me. And Zelaya gets his 10th save of the season. That's a pretty good game. I will I will give that to my team. Atlantics win at Wichita 8-3. Let's see what we did here. We scored another three runs in the ninth, and now we're getting our runs produced throughout throughout the game. And that's that's what we want, really, is getting runs throughout the game. But again, Wichita's a team that we should be winning against. If you look at the record, they're the same as ours, 22 and 32. So that's you know, it, you gotta take that with a grain of salt, right? So um, Kleinmeyer goes one for six as a leadoff guy. Eh, not the best. Roberts one for four. Philpot again, stellar performance. Three for five, four, uh, four for five, three runs. Two for five for Inselman. I like Inselman right now. I know his average is low for the season so far, but I like that he's at least getting on base. Two hits, three runs batted in. He's got the power. I just need him to start hitting some homers, and I'd be a lot happier. Austin goes one for four, Smart one for four, Pena one for five, or one for five for Smart and Pena. 
I need these players to get a little bit better. Stroke the two run double to make it five three Atlantics. Well, you know, Chad Smart does that sometimes, I suppose. <laughs> oh man. All right. So looking at here, Clark gets his fourth win, pitches eight innings, gets a quality start. I like that. I like that a lot. Nieves just holds it together and pitches that inning as a setup closer. Fine. I can deal with that. Wingnuts mow down the Atlantics nine to two. And here's that blowout I'm talking about. And it was Conda. That is surprising. I didn't really expect his second start to be that abysmal, but I guess it's gonna we're gonna be hit and miss while our prospects kind of get adjusted to the major league level. I know that's a thing that happens in this game. Smart blanks. So smart at the top of the lineup is not good. Clearly, we're seeing that. Smart needs to be back at the bottom of the lineup. Um, he, him as a leadoff is not the option, and we need to make sure we correct that in this uh, in the break between these two videos. Inselman blanks out again, leaves four on base. That's not the best performance. Phil Pot two for four. Austin two for four, and Fountain here. See, and this is where Fountain does well. He's three for four today. So it's like back and forth with him. I got to figure out where he's going to look. So end of the season, his development is going to be what really drives it home, and kind of see what he's going to do. Um, looking here, reached on an error. So Gates Adler reached on error by the third base, driving in one run. Okay, so eh, I wouldn't say that 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 was what did it because Conda gives up. They scored eight runs in in the seventh, and that was under the watch of Conda and partially Rydell. So, eh. Par for the course for me at this point. So I'm just kind of looking at it going, eh, it's what else to expect here. So um, Railcats, we played Gary, South Shore Railcats. Smart goes two for three. And let me guess, he's not at the top of the lineup. Nope. So this lineup is a good lineup. The other lineup is pretty terrible. That's what it looks like. Or I think this is Kleinmeier is left-handed. So maybe they're just struggling against right-handed pitchers. I don't know. I don't know the answer. All I do know is that we're obviously winning games and generating runs against lefties. Take that for what you will. That's what we're discovering now. Sam Morano gets a win. Hey, now. Quality start. I like that. And July gets his 11 save of the season. So we win that game. That's good. Jim Witt led Gary South Shore to 12 to 4. See another blowout. We're going back to back. Okay. And clearly not the issue here because look here, this is lefties. This is uh, against left handed hitter uh, pitchers, and we score three in the ninth. That's just not going to cut it. Five, two, and four. And that's going to be Martin. So we know John Martin needs to go. That's not even a question. John Martin needs to go. I might move down to a four man rotation and get rid of Martin. What do you think? Do we do that? He pitches two innings and is benched. Williamson pitches three innings and is benched. Romero pitches an inning and, and, and some change and is benched. And they're all giving up runs. That's not going to do it. I, so it wasn't even the hitting that was the problem. It was the pitching. We put up four runs. Pitching was a disaster. Golly, that's so frustrating. Late rally by Railcats secures the win. So they won again. We lost three. We won three. So we went three and three. Even. Even Steven is not going to be good right now when we need to pick up like 10 wins. Terribleness. 3-2. to two, No subs. No performance. Zelaya gets the loss. Ooh. Puts up a run. Yeah. Put up a run in the ninth. So Zelaya blew a save. He's going to do that from time to time. I know that. He's not going to be perfect, right? He's not the best closer. He was... I think fifth or sixth ranked closer in the in the league. Um, Starks did well. Starks did well. He doesn't get a win or a loss, but Starks did well. I'm I'm okay with that. I I just got to look at it like, hey, sometimes you're gonna get a loss like that. Um, let's go back to the office, and we'll see here that Philpot is actually third in the league in hitting, and I like that. That's pretty good. It makes me happy. Uh, no home runs though. <laughs> We're done with home runs. Defensive efficiency is still at 7th. Stolen base is down to 6th and pretty much dead last and everything else. 12th and on-base percentage. Meh. It's all it's all chump change at this point. We need to get better. And this trade 
what will be the deciding factor. Let's take a look at that player right now. You're going to see it right now. I'm going to show you. Edgar Cantu, okay? Cantu, power, eight. My my scout and uh, OSA says eight. Six and I. So what does that mean? $452,000. Who are we going to get rid of? Good question. We're getting this guy. No matter what, we're getting this guy. We're going to have to give up a lot, though. We're going to have to give up one of our prospects. So it's either going to be Conda uh, for pitching. Hang on. So we need we need he, he needs pitching. So he's looking at either Conda or uh, Brunk or Duran or Nolan as one of the players that he wants. The second player that he wants is Jacqueline, who is a pretty good uh, rated player. 866 by OSA, 655 by my scout. So somewhere in the middle of that is going to be where he sits. He will be good in, in a couple of years. We look at his stats, uh, pitching stats. He played three years in college, and he just started with our team. I drafted him. I'm okay with giving him up because we will get Contu. Let me search him back up here. For three seasons. And the third season, we get him for cheap. So... We'll get him now, and we'll get him for two more seasons. Do we give up a prospect to, to make it happen right now and to get this guy for two seasons? I think yes. What's also going to happen is he's going to eat. It's going to be a three-for-one trade, like I said, because he's going to end up eating a contract, and it's most likely going to be either uh, Hymas, Roberts, or Cobra, most likely Hymas or Roberts, based on the conversations right now. That's what's on the table, but there's also a conversation that he might take one of my relievers as well with that, and that'll keep the accounting even because I have no room to sign a player. That's our trouble we're having. Otherwise, I could have gone ahead in offseason and signed somebody. So that's on the table, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to make a trade that should get us into the playoffs. That's where we're trying to go right now. Of 55% revenue and attendance. 28,000 people out of 30,000 are coming on average to each game. And that's only because we had a dip at the beginning of the season. People doubted us. But hey, market size, fan interest, fan loyalty, all huge numbers. Looking at accounting, we're still tracking above 250, and that's where we want to live. We can walk out of here with a quarter million dollars at the end of the season. We'll be okay. We might lose a little bit on that, about 50K, depending on who we move over in this trade. But this is a blockbuster deal that's about to happen. Strap in, it's going to get real. If you have any other suggestions, you can obviously let me know in the comments section or on Twitter at F5Penguin, and I'm there at all my social media contacts at F5Penguin. You can also click the link in the description below to the link for the website for the Premier League Baseball where you can see the other teams, all their stats, history, etc. I will, of course, leave you with our info. You can see where we sit both record-wise and pitching and uh, batting, so you can see where we, where we are. And things are the same, same old, same old losing. We stay losing. That's probably going to be the name of the title for this video. We stay losing. Um, I don't know what to do. So I'm making this decision to make the trade. I'm hoping it's going to turn out better for everybody. We will have to see. I don't know yet. I'm optimistic that this is going to be a good idea. I'm trying not to get strong armed, but at the same time, I'm going to give my brother... Or if even if it wasn't my brother, I'd give that other GM an extra player to eat that contract because it's like a measure of good faith. That's why we're doing this. So I hope you liked this video. I know it was a quick brief one. We're going to look at the double A teams in the next video in episode 12. That'll happen. So stay tuned for that. And until then, this has been Out of the Park Baseball 17 IMF 5 Penguin. And this is the Premier League Baseball GM Mode Sim. Until next time.